Hello everybody, Sam here from Dorks with my colleague Zoe. Hello. Uh, we are here to talk about something very exciting. Tell us more. <gasps> the brand new, for 2024, Buffet Ooh. Festival clarinet. Look at it. Now, it's had a bit of a revamp, so we thought it deserved its own grand entrance to Dorks. So I'll be talking to pro clarinet player Nicholas Carpenter, who's going to be giving us a bit of a demo and discussion about it. What are you going to be doing, Sam? Well, I'm going to be talking to you about the technical things that they've changed on this buffet festival and why they've changed them as well. And we'll also look at the case, the outfit, basically everything that comes with it. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. And here he is, Nick Carpenter, principal clarinet with BBC's National Orchestra of Wales. A very busy man. Thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. 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 You're going to test for us the new updated Buffet Festival clarinet. We're very excited to hear you play. Yeah. We're honoured, actually. Uh, we're going to hear from Sam in the workshop, who's going to give us all the lowdown on the tech spec for this updated version. And then we're going to get Nick's very valuable insights. But right now, would you like to play for us? Sure. Okay, let's get into the tech spec of this brand new Buffet Festival. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that the changes they've done on the B flat are different to the changes they've done on the A, and that kind of makes sense because each instrument has its own characters and challenges from the point of view of manufacturing and intonation. So let's look at the two things that they've done on the B flat. And actually, before even I get there, I should say the internal bore on both instruments, the B flat and the A, are exactly the same as previously. So it responds and the character of the clarinet is essentially the same as it was before, but there's been a couple of important changes, as I say. B flat wise, the changes are all around the right hand. So in the clarion register, as you go over to the C, the C sharp, the D, the D sharp, Commonly, or one complaint perhaps on the old festival, was the pitch was always a little high in that area of the instrument. So what Buffet have done to correct for that is they have slightly modified the tone hole positions of the uh, three ring keys here on the right hand. They've actually moved them down, a little bit down the joint, and they've also changed the internal sizes and the undercutting. Now what does all of that mean? Well, it means that the pitch comes down because of those changes, back into where most people would be comfortable with it. However, when you do any changes like this, and by the way, these changes are the same that they introduced with the Tosca and you now find on the Legend and the Divine, i.e. they wanted to update the festival. But when you do any changes like this, you often have to do something slightly different in the bell because often those two areas are interconnected. And what Buffet have done is they've shortened the bell by two millimeters. And that, as I say, is to sort of correspond with what's happened further up and it keeps the pitch in these lower three or four uh, notes basically on track. It also livens up slightly the sound and the response down there in that part of the instrument. So that's the B flat. Now on the A, which unfortunately we don't have with us because Buffet just don't have stock at the moment, but on the A I'll explain what they've done because it's different. They've raised the pitch internally just very slightly on the low E F with a little tweak inside and that's just one tiny thing on the A. But physically what you can see is they've also added, and obviously you can't see it now because it's the B flat, but they've added a raised tone hole to the C sharp, G sharp here. Now that helps sometimes with avoiding an excess of moisture because that can often get very wet down there. But also it changes very slightly the character of the, 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 the note itself, the, yeah, the tonality of it. It cleans it up a little bit because sometimes that can be a slightly difficult note. The final thing which they've done on the A, thank you for sticking with me, is they've changed inside here, the register tube is now longer. And again, that's to help actually with the intonation up the top end of the instrument, that's just on the A. So to be very clear, they haven't changed anything on the right hand in the A, 
that's all on the B flat. And so there are different characteristic changes there. All in all, from my point of view, they've made what was already a really good clarinet really, really good. And there's really very well, little, nothing to complain about now on this festival. It plays really, really beautifully, but we'll see what Nick thinks about it as well. Now let's just very quickly look at the actual outfit and what it comes with, because like many buffet clarinets, you can actually choose which case you want to buy it with. Um, there's the standard sort of hard case here, which many of you will have seen for many years, very robust, durable, and um, it's got the standard clasps on the top, you know, all the usual good stuff. But they also make this, what they call this pochette case, or it depends how you pronounce it, don't murder me in the comments. Um, and this is more slim line, I would suggest, with a simple handle here and two uh, little openings like that. So depending on what you want to go for, there might be a slight price difference. And obviously if, you, if you're looking at one of these from Dorks, do just communicate with us and we'll help you choose the case that you want to go with. Final thing I would say, like all uh, buffet professional clarinets, it does not come with a mouthpiece, just the ligature and the cap. And that's because they would expect you to have your own high quality mouthpiece if you're looking at this sort of kit. One little tech stuff which has not changed, but I would like to point out, is that um, like most of the buffet professional clarinets, the tenon caps are metal, or excuse me, the tenon, there's a, a metal ring on the end of the tenons here on the top joint and the bottom joint. That adds just a little bit of solidity to the build and potentially to the sound as well. So from a technical point of view, that's all I wanna share with you about this brand new buffet festival. Let's jump back to Nick and see what he has to say because he's got so much experience playing buffet clarinets, the old festivals and his old buffet instruments as well. So back to him and Zoe. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, Nick. That was really, really wonderful. We feel very honored that you played that for us. Um, how did it feel? Absolutely lovely. Oh. Well, really, really. I've been here now at, at, at Dorks um, for a couple of hours this morning, just locked in a room playing this instrument and really, I think it's absolutely fabulous. Um, you play a buffet yourself. I, I do too. play a buffet, yeah. yeah. Um, I've got an old R13, um, How old are we well, 1973, right. and it's specifically made for the UK market. It's got the UK stamp on it. They did that in, when, when, um, back then. Um, and um, there's, uh, I chose that instrument because it's got, for me, it's got the, the, um, the, the lovely combination of the qualities of the R13 and the RC. It is, you can trace its heritage, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's got that brilliance to the sound which the R13 has, but somehow my 1973 um, R13 has a warmth to it, which, which, which I really like. And suddenly I'm playing this this morning, and the more I play it, the more I think, gosh, this really feels very similar in a way. You can feel the heritage of the R13 in the instrument, and yet there is that depth of sound, yeah. um, which, I, which I'm always looking for, and it really you, is You were here. telling me earlier that you're a bright player, and you got that yes. from your dad, who was also that's, clarinet. That's right, yeah. yes. He, he was, um, he, he was uh, principal clarinet in Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra for nearly 40 years, and he played uh, Boozing Hawks 1010s, which I think are post, post-war most Orchest British orchestral um, players did, and he naturally made a very bright sound, and that's the sound I grew up with hearing. So I tend to, to, to gravitate towards that. So I'm always looking for that for instruments or mouthpiece or reeds or whatever it is to, to, to add the depth and warmth um, to, to my sound. And certainly this instrument has that. Um, it's, 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 it seems to, 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 to have all the, 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 the qualities I'm looking for. It enables me to play, for instance, very loud. There's a, there's a so I'll, I'll play, there's a so, solo um, in the uh, middle of the first movement of Nielsen's Fifth Symphony, and it requires the clarinet to project over a loud orchestra. He writes to play fortissimo, fortissimo uh, sempre fortissimo, always loud, and it's got to be really right over the orchestra. And I think that, that, that this instrument would absolutely enable me to do that.
very rich sound. So you can hear in this, yeah. in this, it's not a big room, but, um, and it's, you know, really a big sound, I think. And I think that would fill, you know, St. David's Hall in Cardiff. I hope it would. Um, but it's still, I hope, even in here, it didn't sound as if it was shouting. It still retained that, that warmth um, and depth of sound, which um, this instrument really enables me to do. You seem like you're having your head turned a bit. Though, a little bit, yeah. I am. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Um, did you play the previous version? I did. I had um, also in Dorks, they have a, a, a pre updated, a new festival, but, but it's pre the updated um, technical spec. Um, and oh, it's incredibly similar. I mean, yeah. really similar. Um, it feels the same, and yet. I don't know whether it's because of the slight redesign of the right hand, moving the tone holes just slightly lower down, the slightly shorter bell, whatever it is, there seems to be even greater warmth um, in this instrument than, than that. It could be just that this instrument's a very warm instrument. You know, you can have, you can have five or six supposedly identical instruments and they've all got slightly different characteristics because yeah. we're dealing with, you know, living, living wood. Yeah. Um, so so it, could be, it could be just that. But this instrument that I've got in my hand now has a depth and a warmth of sound. Um, and I think, um, I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll demonstrate the other end of that scale now at the same, in the same symphony um, towards the end of that same movement. There's um, a beautiful, beautiful extended kind of like a clarinet solo cadenza, which requires us to play, uh, he says, um, uh, like in the distance. Um, and it's a very poignant, for me, very poignant, uh, melancholic solo, but it requires inc real control towards the upper end of the instrument and all in a, quite a, a quiet dynamic scale. So you can you can hear there's a there's a there's what I love about it is an evenness in that in the the tone going from one note to the next note. This there's a lot of um, middle finger right hand left sharps. Now you have to be a real clarinet geek for this, but that <laughs> can on a lot of instruments it has a kind of a slightly um, quality I've always used to describe it. Slightly kind of a brittle quality in if you compare it to the notes surrounding it. And yet this festival, whatever, whatever they've done, I don't know. But that now sounds as warm as the notes right around it. Um, and the same with that uh, left hand A in the, in the middle register. That can have a, somehow some to be a bright quality, but not on this instrument. It, has, it really matches the notes either sound and it has that warmth. Um, the other thing I love about it, how it is possible to play um, uh, an absolute legato, how somehow, again, the notes, they, they really join up smoothly. There's no kind of bumps or unevenness. Um, you know, I've only been with this instrument for a couple of hours, and yet I feel, I feel that already. So it's, it's really been a, a pleasure to play this this morning. Is there anything else you'd like to play? Oh, I could <laughs> do one more. Come on, one more. This is a lovely, because we're in the middle of Come summer. Come on, let's we're do it. We're in the it. middle of summer. <laughs> So this is the middle, um, the middle uh, study um, after themes by Gershwin, by Paul Harvey, and it's called Summertime. And if you listen carefully, you can hear snatches of that, that summertime, da, yeah. da, dee, da, da, dee, da. you can hear that in the, in the, um, 
in the, the study that he's written. But again, it's, it, quite, it, re it requires really quiet, controlled legato playing. And I was playing that this morning again, and I thought, oh gosh, this, this instrument really helps me with that. It obviously goes on longer than that, but I thought that's probably enough Thank just to you, show Nick. you kind of that, 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 that sound world. That, You've that definitely this, demonstrated this, this the full breadth of what that instrument can mm, do. Yeah. Seems yeah, like I hope anything. So. I hope so. I hope so. It's, it's, I think it's really, really uh, a remarkable instrument. And, and um, yes. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Lock the doors. He's going to try and make off with this one. So that's the Buffet Festival Clarinet Refresh for 2024. Thank you so much to Nicholas Carpenter here. Like and subscribe our video. Visit dorks.co.uk and we'll see you next time.